on this journey. You got to do the work. Welcome, welcome back. This is part two. A healthy dialogue. So we, we, we state the problem. Oftentimes we get stuck on the problem and we state the problem, you know, but then we need to look and chart a, a way to a solution. And so um, we just stated the problem. It was miscommunication, uh, the lack of ability to disagree without defacing the next individual who of which you're going to have to work with, possibly. Um, and so I've learned, this is not something I just, I, I, yes. No. Sorry, that's, that's, that's the baby like, yeah, I got you. You know, you doing something, I'm about to hem you up, lady. Um, <laughs> what was I saying? Yeah, this is something that you have to practice. This is, first of all, before you practice, you have to become aware. You have to become aware of yourself. So that's number one. Awareness is key. That's what they say consciousness. That's all consciousness is. It doesn't mean you're going to necessarily choose the right thing. Consciousness is just that awareness. So oftentimes we see other people. I don't like that sister. I don't like that brother. You know, because they always such and such and they think such and such. Okay, boom. We've put in too much concentration on what's going on out there. If we become aware of ourselves and how do we feel when someone is saying something we don't agree with what are the thoughts that we begin to think do you begin calling them names in your mind do you begin cursing their family just because you do not agree with them how do you become what is your temperament this is the meditation i was talking about earlier when we begin to check ourselves does your chest swell can you is your lip jumping you can't wait to get in there and just tear them down does disagreeing with that individual give you an open door to berate them? You got to be honest with yourself. And once you become honest with yourself, then you can move from that point. But like I said, awareness is definitely key because I see it all over. So there was a, I didn't even know about it, but there was a trend of uh, when people who are YouTubers reading their nasty comments. And then I didn't even know this existed. So I went on there and it's all these YouTubers who decides to read the nasty comments of the people who don't agree with whatever they're saying. And, and it can range from the tech guy, you know, they're giving the tech guy like nasty comments all the way to social commentators. And then I'm slow, right? Because I'm slow with what was go what's going on. Not slow, slow, but slow with that. So then there's this mean tweet thing, I think, on one of the night shows where they read, read the mean tweets and they actually, what's his name? Jimmy Kimmel, I think his name is. <laughs> uh, Tatiana says, I do get upset. My mind screams, no, 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 that's not right. Correct. But okay, so Tatiana says, okay, she's owning it. Tatiana's like, I get upset, and I'm like, nah, that's not correct. That's wrong. At that point, how do you express that? Do you, A, just keep it to yourself and wait for your turn to, to say why you don't agree? B, ask the individual for further explanation as to why or how they concluded that or where did they get or source the information from or C begin to just deface the individual and call them all kind of names a B, a N, a stupid ba 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 ba. What are the ways in which you go about this? Is it one in which that you can get understanding or hopefully, oh Tatiana says she asked them to explain beautiful now how do you ask them like I'm going in on Tatiana right now cause, but how do you ask them to explain do you be like where did you get that from? That's asking to explain or uh, can you explain a little bit more so I can understand where you're coming from? Is it one where it's going to be offensive or defensive? In the, um, please, now explain that. You know, we have a way in which our body language, our tone, our inflection puts people on guard. And sometimes, like she said, we get excited inside. And then I tell them why I don't agree. And this is good communication. You don't agree in your mind. Then you ask for explanation, and then you tell them, the second one, Tatiana says, and then you tell them why you don't agree. And then guess what? It's okay. It's okay. Because the reality is, people have different experiences at different times. And they may not be seeing what you see, because they didn't necessarily live how you live, or have done the research that you have done, or had the conversations that you have had. 
one's delivery is very important, and I agree, Gina. But oftentimes, like I said, once we feel offended, there's a, there's a, there's a proverbial saying in the Caribbean, um, and I'm going to try to speak it. I, I threw my corn, right? But I didn't call any fouls. And, and, and Bob Marley sings it. He said, me chow me can, me never can no foul. That means you said what you had to say, especially in a group environment. And whoever, it's like, uh, what it says, if you throw a, 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 a thing, the dog that hollers is the one that got hit. It's the same narrative. It's the same thing. I, I threw it out, but it wasn't directly to anyone personally. And whoever's hollering, that's the person who got hit. Now, the person who's hollering, the other individual may not be aware of why you're hollering. And if you want to have a discourse, then you explain. Or not. Or you just take it. Because sometimes some stuff is just for us to meditate on. And I'm saying this from somebody who all the time, from time memorial, I've known myself. I say stuff that get people upset. And it's not because I'm being necessarily mean or nasty. It's just some stuff like the pink elephant in the room. I'm that person. And people be like, did you have to say that? And I used to be less tactful. Yes, that's it. A hit dog will holler. That's, that's the same proverb of throwing your corn, but you didn't call any foul. So whoever's, um, you said, yeah, the hit dog is going to holler. That's, that's exactly the one I was looking for. Thank you, Gina. So my point of the matter is, as we're being more social, we have to learn to be more social. You understand? As we're being more social and engaging, we can use this tool for power. We can use it to bridge gaps. We can use it to break down barriers. We can use it to deconstruct stereotypes. Perception is key, correct? Everybody is standing at different points on the circle. So I could be right here right now and somebody's standing five degrees away from me and I'm over here like, do you see the rainbow? The reality is with a rainbow, if you're standing at a certain angle, you're not going to see it. And I could be like, oh, such and such, you don't you see the rainbow right there? And they're like, I don't see the rainbow. Because if you're not at the angle that I am, the rainbow disappears for you. So we have to come outside of ourselves and realize that other people may be standing at a different point. Cain, okay, Crystal, they have to be open-minded, and this is what I find. A lot of times we're fearful of what we believe. A lot of times what we believe has never been tested. We don't uh, know how to act when someone comes up against that preconceived notion. Uh, we're Like I said, we're fearful of what will happen or that maybe, possibly, we might have to grow. And growing up, as children, when parents stuff the voice of the child down back into them and not allow them to flush out their thoughts, not allow them to respectfully express themselves. Many people grow up thinking either I'm going to hold it in or I'm going to wait till I can't take it anymore and it bubbles over and then I'm going to vomit it on you. So we really have to act, uh, analyze how it is that we learn to communicate from childhood to see whether or not our voice was important, whether or not we have to find our voice again and learn how, I don't know why people don't like me. Maybe because you act really nasty sometimes. You're not a good communicator. I know it always comes out wrong. These are the things that people say. <laughs> it always comes out wrong because maybe it is the way that you're meditating about it in your mind is one that I'm right and you're wrong. And I don't care anything that you say. Anything that you say, I'm going to be offended. If you're easily offended, that's like somebody who's easily bruised. Oh, you bro, oh, that hurt. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that hurt. You might want to check out some stuff. But anyway, I'm not going to keep you guys too long this morning. Um, I'm going to drink a little bit of my lemon water. Sorry. My thing is, I'm all about self-analysis in order to be able to express ourselves one to another um, in a positive way so that, we, like I said, we can heal. And, and Because our relationships have really been broken. Whether it be mother to daughter, father to son, you know, daughter to sister. All of these relationships in a large degree as a community has been tampered with and broken. I, it's very true I had to find my voice. That's what Robin says and Webb said, sister. This is what Crystal says. And so hopefully, like I said, I'm about empowerment, but we have to first, we got to do it ourselves. Like I could tell you, somebody else could tell you, but you have to take the time to do it for yourself. Do it yourself yourself. 
soul improvement. That's what soul anonymous is about. Told me to express myself. I try not to be disrespectful. Correct. Like I said, if the person perceives it as disrespect, that's one thing. But if you meant it as disrespect, yeah, then you meant to offend. Like somebody I heard the other day say, yeah, I meant to offend you. It's like, not to me personally, they were on a video. And I'm like, oh, okay. You meant to offend the person. So when they come back like a, a rabid dog, and then now we have this back and forth, tug of war, and nothing gets solved. And then you have people breaking apart because people can't sit down and say, hey, what's up with this? And it's okay not to like everybody. I'll end on that. You know what? It's okay. Everybody's not your cup of tea. Everybody doesn't always like the same flavor. Everybody doesn't need the same amount of nutrients of something. So for some people, it's not necessary. And for others, it is. And sometimes you outgrow people. And that's all okay. You don't necessarily have to like the person. But do you have to be mean, nasty? Let me just say, and I like to relate it oftentimes to what I'm studying, which is the institution of slavery. One of the ways that the slave master would oppress you one of the ways the slave master would uh, separate you or berate you, that, that's it. They would berate you. They would call you ugly, black, nappy-headed. The slave masters was doing this. And then the slaves one to another began to say, you ugly, black, dark, nappy, da, ba, ba, winch, da, 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 haul it. Like I saw yesterday, and I got to go do my review um, on Underground. But this pastor, this preacher, he comes around and he claims that he's going to baptize everybody on the plantation. And right when Ernestine's character was about to go down, when, he, when she was about to go down, he said, I seen you, Jezebel. The name calling. This is how they get you. This is how they get in your mind. And right now, they don't even got to do it because we're doing it ourselves. Even though they're still doing it on the L. They're doing it on, the L is on the low, right? So they're still doing it in their they're still doing it in their news media. They're still doing it in their outlets. You know, taking swipes, calling names. And this is why for me, the angry black woman, the angry black man, the Jezebel, the, the, these stereotypes and these narratives are very important to look at. Um, I'm sorry, I missed some stuff. Tatiana says, parents always take it as disrespect if you speak with expression. This is true. And Robin is agreeing. Gina says, I have outgrown so many people and that's okay. I don't got to hate you. I, I came up with a lot of people. I don't hate them. It's just that you keep growing and everybody grows at different rates. When in our actuality, they were jealous of our beauty because we are beautiful. And like I said, I have, I have a narrative that I'm reading and that's the truth. They were jealous oftentimes of your skin complexion. Jealous that you don't burn in the sun. I'm jealous that you're so resilient. Je jealous of a whole lot of things. And because of that jealousy, I'm going to come now and, and, and just demean you. And so as we continue to go forward, like I said, disagreement is healthy. Because if you just agree with everything someone says, then you're a crony. No cronies. But expression is key. How do we express ourselves? Is it in a respectable way that we can go forward and have a healthy conversation? And just remember the thought. Just because you don't want those bananas in the store don't mean you get to throw them down and start jumping all over them because guess what you just broke somebody else's produce you understand um so once again thank you for tuning in i'm about to go help my daughter make some pancakes so uh i pray everybody have a blessed day once again i just put the link in this new one so if you do want the um free pdf download I wrote it a few years ago, so um, you might be like 2008. I was speaking about my health journey, but as you and, and the importance of colon cleansing. I'm sorry, you're also gonna find in there the importance of colon cleansing. I know a moon is like all over the place, but guess what? A impacted colon affects your emotions. You welcome, you welcome, Robin. You welcome, Gina. If your if your colon is is overloaded. That's your, that's your gut for perception. That's why people say, I feel it in my gut, right? I got a gut instinct. When it is contaminated, bless you too, Tatiana, when it's contaminated in that area, it, 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 it fogs the mind. So that the, the, what you're going to download, the PDF, you're going to see it speak about the importance of colon cleansing and how it helps. Because a lot of people just go on diets, they begin to exercise. But colon cleansing is a must you will be surprised what comes out and you will also be surprised what kind of emotions are released 
when you release these years of compacted fecal matter. But that's another video, and I got to go. So everybody, bless up yourself. Go forward. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and give a smile to some unsuspected stranger. Um, you never know how you might brighten up their days. Better day, better way.